Hello everybody and welcome to the semi-finals of Grand Prix Chicago. The format is modern. The players we're watching are Josh utter Layton and Alex Magliton. The decks are Spirit Jund and Robots. My co-host, Jacob Van Lunen. Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Alex Magliton is on the play, playing Robots, an extremely aggressive aggro deck. Joshua Layton is going to want to stave off the aggression of Alex Magliton until he's able to take the game over with passive card advantage through things like Bloodbraid Elf and uh, just more powerful spells that go a little bit larger than what Alex is able to produce. Uh, cards like Erupt Decay are very good here. It's able to kill Cranial Plating, which is one of Alex's main paths to quick victory. Uh, Post-boarded games, Josh is going to gain a big advantage. He has Shatterstorm. He has more spot removal. He has Rakdos Charm. So this first game, it's extremely important that Alex picks this up if he wants to win the match. Fairly reasonable first turn for Alex. Two one drops. Um, if he can't apply additional pressure on turn two with uh, something like a Cranial Plating or a Steel Overseer, then Josh will be pretty happy. But there comes the Steel Overseer, and now Josh is going to be forced to have a spot removal spell to deal with that. Josh is a strong enough player that I don't think he'd keep a hand that didn't have at least one piece of spot removal for that Steel Overseer. <laughs> and scene. Yes. <laughs> so Josh not worried about taking another two. That's plenty of turns. Spring leaf drum. Signal passed. And make a blue, draw two cards. And things could definitely be going worse right now for Josh or Lane. Still at 16. Um, only three creatures on the other side of the table for Alex Magiton, and that may seem crazy <laughs> that, that's, that that's not a bad position. But in comparison to how things could be... Right, he's dumped six permanents into play, seven permanents into play by turn two. Oh, well, turn three. And, oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Yeah. But the... Uh, it's and capable of so much more. Cards. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, He's definitely doing a lot here, but... And there's the spirits. It's not something that Josh can't deal with. The spirits are going to help him. As long as he can just keep his head above water for a little bit longer, this Lingering Souls could gum up the board enough for him to take over. Looks like Alex Magelton has another copy of Signal Pest in hand. Right now, he's really hoping to find something like a Master of Ethereum or a Steel Overseer that could allow him to make these one toughness guys grow a little bit larger so that they could bash through the Lingering Souls. Now, just attacking with Mem Knight and Vault Scourge, there's no way Josh doesn't just double, just doesn't just throw one in front of each of these. Great trade for Josh. Josh is super happy half, about half that. Half a card. <laughs> yep, half a card, killed two cards. And my hand. Yep, and just that other half of the Lingering Souls almost deals with the entirety of that. Right now, Josh Hutter Layton with a few decisions to make here. Just gonna go ahead and flash back this Lingering Souls. Understands how powerful it is in the given situation with the board state as it is. Luckily for Josh, this is an Ink Moth Nexus, so it's dealing poison damage. Everybody's attacking. Josh is likely going to block a Vault Scourge and a Signal Pest right here. Take three poison. Taking three poison. Needs to find a leech or something. <laughs> Mark Rosewater screaming from his locked room in the wizard supply closet. <laughs> no, no leeches! No leeches, they cannot exist. So, 
yeah. takes three poison, leaves a signal past, and we get another Vault Scourge. And now we're getting to the point where Alex is sort of playing off the top of his deck, and now Joshua DeLayton's one-for-one one removal has time to just pick apart his board. Yeah, he can just take the game over. Looks like Josh drew another Lingering Souls. Mm -hmm. Or he could just do it a half card at a time again. Yeah, and... Two for half. <laughs> lingering Souls, so good. This is what we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, and Alex can't do anything really but attack. He can't stop attacking. And if he does, then he's giving Josh opportunities to make plays with blockers on the table. And if Josh can start, you know, activating planeswalkers when there are blockers on the table, then there's almost no chance that Alex can win this game. And Alex can't attack. Time to send in the Tarmogoyfs? I think it may be time to send in the Tarmogoyfs. I think it's uh, it's fun watching Josh and LSV play this deck because they both play it very differently. Josh plays a uh, semi-cautious control game with this Spirit John deck while LSV is kind of playing like a, a maniac aggro version, even though they're playing the exact <laughs> same 75 cards. I, I wonder I wonder if that's a function of the of the matchups. You know, you talk about like kind of the, oh. the beatdown control roles that people play in a match. I wonder if it's a function of where, where they've had to be. Yeah, and there's a Tarmogoyf and two spirit tokens. You know, with one card at a time off the top of his deck, how is Alex Magiton gonna, gonna punch through here? It seems really difficult at this point. And Tarmogoyf, traditionally a very strong card against uh, artifact aggro decks. It's been strong against Affinity forever and now against these newer robot decks. It's definitely an all-star. It's just way bigger than anything they can put on the table. The fact that they have artifacts happens to make it even larger. <laughs> Fistful of cards for Josh. I mean, we're not kidding. When he said, I mean, he's literally gone, you know, two for half a card. Two for yep. half a card. Yeah, Essentially twice. a four for one. Yep. Better than an Ancestor Recall. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, ha and, you know, he's been using his mana on, on those, ha has not had to commit a lot of uh, resources to the board from his hand. So he's just got, he's got a fistful of stuff, and every time he shuffles by his hand, I'm seeing, oh, there's an Abrupt Decay. Oh, there's a Liliana. Oh, there's, you know, some other awesome card. It just has tons of spot removal. It is in absolutely no danger to lose this game. Looks like Liliana's about to come down. Keep it. Yeah. Make Alex discard a card, or rather make Alex sacrifice a creature. Signal Pest hits the bin. Yeah. <laughs> you see, Alex just kind of slumped back in his chair, like, whatever. All right, I'll thought cast. You know, and there was a time where in this deck, you know, you could really be, feel like you were safe against Affinity, and feel like you're in a position like this, and they're just like, shrapnel blast, shrapnel blast, kill you. Hey, you're dead. But that's not how it is anymore. Shrapnel Blast isn't played anymore. I think Alex has two or three copies of uh, Galvanic, Galvanic Blast. Blast in his main deck, but... We've seen that work, too. Hey, it's pretty good. All right, now uh, Rusty keep an Alex Magic on the other table. Really, I mean, he, going on he threw there? away all those creatures so early. I think he may have needed to play a slower game plan, but it's really hard to convince yourself to play that slower game plan when <coughs> you know that your opponent's deck has way better tools to play the control game than you do. And, it's such, and this is such a different game if the Steel Overseer even lives for a turn. Yes. Massively different game. All right. That Lightning Bolt was a <laughs> huge, huge part of this game. If those guys have two toughness, then Josh, 
you know, is going to be forced to take an extra five oh, on that turn, and then his hand, might have had to chump, and yeah. then it's a slippery slope. There's an inquisition of Kozilek. He's like, what do you got? I think Alex has a galvanic bust. Yeah, he does. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, eight minutes. Can I draw two more of these? Yeah. That's what and he needs to do. That's his plan. He's like, take you to eight. <laughs> And a welding jar out of Alex's hand there. That's got to be a like blah, top deck at this point in the match. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. I drew a welding jar. Yeah. <laughs> what he wouldn't give for a heart of Chiscoria. Yeah. <laughs> and scale of Chiscoria. Would scale be, of Chiscoria, that's the would one. Be a, would be a beast right now, yeah, huh? Yeah, scale. It's tooth and scale, right? Yeah, yeah. It's actually pretty funny how good Skeletor Scorio would be on this board. This <laughs> <laughs> trumping goes down to eight. It's going to get ticked up. Pitch Bob. Looking for thought cast into Blast Blast. That's the plan. I don't know how reliable that plan is, <laughs> okay, but enough, Matt, you know. Yeah, Alex's fate is on the slimmest of two cards in a row. I, I don't even know he has time. It doesn't look lo too good for him at this point. I mean, Josh is going to be able to activate your ravine if he wants to. Forcing Alex to start chump blocking with his lands. This Liliana activation. So, I mean, after that Liliana activation, Josh could have simply activated the Raging Ravine and then attacked with the four spirits, yep. the yep. Tarmogoyf and the Raging Ravine. And then Alex would have been forced to chump block with both of his lands. Right. So uh, and then he's just dead. And then he has dead, no yeah. even hope of getting, being able to cast Thought Cast and draw two Galvanic, you know, with literally his only out, right? Yeah, his only out was uh, somehow runner runner in Galvanic Blast and Josh, like, not having anything. Yeah. But Josh had many things. Yeah, he had a handful of abrupt decay and, and other stuff. Okay, so now we are looking at our other match. This is Jacob Wilson on your right playing Spirit Chun. This is Edgar Flores on the left playing Blue White Angels. Is this still game one? This is still game one. Inquisition of Kozilek whiffs on a uh, Restoration Angel. That Restoration Angel is going to get to uh, draw Edgar a card with this Wall of Omens. Did he just play two lands? <coughs> no. I mean, was there a land uh, under... The Celestial Colonnade is in his graveyard. Oh, okay. I thought he had three lands, but I guess lands are... No, last turn he had four. He had oh, see, when he, when he has them upright, one of them's hidden above. Yeah. So, in for three. Resto Angel starts doing some work for Edgar here. And a Geist comes down. Slams down, for really. Jacob. Yeah. It's a d decisive Geist. <laughs> Bigger Flores with a foiled out 
blue white angels deck. <laughs> The uh, promo restoration angels. I particularly like the uh, the foil set art restoration angels. I think those are nicer. <laughs> there we go. Jay <laughs> Wilson gonna crack a couple of fetch lines, trying to thin out his deck a little bit. Needs to draw some action here. this point. It's not looking the best for Jacob Wilson. Of course, this is game one. Still a whole match to play here. As a Bloodbraid Elf, it's Deathrite Shaman. It's going to go ahead and attack for one. Edgar, a uh, bit of a decision here. Can uh, let's see what he draws. Okay, so Saint Traft is. Uh, he'll trade with that. Blood Braid, but I'm not sure if he really wants to do that. And yep, just gonna attack with both. All right, so uh, taking seven, Jacob Wilson, falling down the life total pretty significantly here. The, uh, the Death Ray Shaman can do a little bit of work. It can gain Jacob life. It can make yeah. Edgar lose some life. Do we know what life, the life totals are here? We do not know the life totals right now. So, hold on. Let me get these for you. <laughs> four, four. Both players are at four. Oh, interesting. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> that Death Ride Shaman is a lot better than <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> that, that's... So a Spirit Token attacks. Tarmogoyf comes down. So I'd like to remind you guys that you still have two minutes to go back and spend about two minutes or three. He says, can you kill me? Can you kill me from four? With your three power angel, you can't. Jacob Wilson. Jacob Wilson takes that game. So we're waiting for these guys to shuffle up. I was just running through the ninth through through sixteenth place decks. And there are eight different archetypes from nine to sixteen. Wow. Nyapod, Jund, Robots. In fact, Doran, Spirit Jund, Blue White Angels, and Green White Hate. It's pretty awesome. It's like seven and a half different decks. I mean, this deck is much less Green White Hate and much more just Green White Little Kid. A Kibler's deck? Yeah, I think so, right? Because it's sure. just it's just dudes. Some Wiltleaf Lieges. Okay, see a, a big opening from Alex Magiton. Spills out. Uh, Gets uh, gets uh, metalcraft on his mox opal, plays uh, springleaf drum and welding jar, and then is able to cast thought cat uh, thought seize. Sees a hand with Rakdos charm, um, Phyrexian metamorph, and uh, lingering souls. Takes the Rakdos charm. Phyrexian metamorph. That's interesting. 
Yeah, sure. Like land destruction against the Mox Opal. Ooh, very nice. A little bit of a stone rain. I'm sure that's not why he... Yeah, it doesn't seem like the most optimal. Wow. <laughs> All right, so uh, a thought cease. <laughs> Alex Magilaton. Oh, Alex Magilaton mulligan badly. He has no creatures in play and no cards in his hand. There is the etched champion. It's what he wants. Like, hi, I Jundek. What do you do about me? I think that's what uh, what Josh probably sided in the uh, Metamorph? Metamorphs for. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, his will likely be vulnerable to spot removal. Yes, and welding jar. Welding jar. That thing called a welding jar. So lingering souls comes down. And Edge Champion starting to get aggressive. Ooh. And there's a steel overseer. Seen Steel Overseer do a lot of dying. And there's Shatterstorm. And Alex now, no <laughs> cards in hand. It could have been worse. Isn't his, oh, his Glimmer Void lives? Because of Dark Steel Citadel. <laughs> We've seen how this matches up before. The old Vault Scourge versus Lingering Souls. Honestly, imagine if Alex had a uh, Pendlehaven somewhere. <laughs> Be really good. I think Pendlehaven gets n doesn't get enough love. In case you're wondering about that welding jar. Of course, Shatterstorm says, screw you, Welding Jar. Oh, yeah. Cannot be regenerated. Yeah. Yeah, I know some Bury people, all artifacts. Yeah, some people have been looking at, like, Vandal Blast as a replacement. <laughs> but uh, Vandal Blast, you could definitely regenerate from. Yeah, I mean, Vandal Blast can be used as a replacement if, if you're the type of deck that's going to have a lot of artifacts. The Tron deck, for example. Sure. We'll use that. It, it doesn't want to kill its own Worm Coil tokens. But... When it comes to the best card, Shatterstorm is certainly a more powerful card than Vandal Blast against these affinity decks. All right, and these spirits chugging away. Master of Ethereum. That's a 4-4, four -four, and that turns that Vault Scourge into a 2-2. Two -two. Something no Josh isn't really winning the race. I mean, Josh yeah, likely no has abrupt something. Decay, Maelstrom Pulse, uh, another Shadow Storm. Basically anything. So Alex Magistan now down to 10. You can tell by the reddening of the lights that he's near death. It's a new effect we've added. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a video game yeah. from 1995, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Once you go down to 10, he, like, flashes red, like, once every 15 seconds. That would be awesome. You know, once we he's down to five, to it yeah. starts happening, like, once every five seconds. When he's at one, it's, like, this, like, strobe light-like effect. <laughs> That's a great idea. I love it. Eats a token. Hanging on, sticking Just around. Hanging around. There's a Ravager. <coughs> Not bad. Let's see. 
Josh have any way to interact with Arcbound Ravager? It seems like he would. But the Arcbound Ravager can't get that big. If Alex chooses to go completely all in on it, then it's still only a 4-4. But Alex could choose to go completely all in on the Fault Scourge, make himself a mini Baneslayer Angel. Yeah. And I mean that that might just be his best option. And then here. he's just I mean he's just rooting for Josh's hand to be three blanks at this point. If Josh has anything, Alex is out of this game. The problem is if Josh draws anything, Alex is out of this game also. Yeah, I mean he can, he can make that into a five five, right? Um, 4-4, four, four, right? Four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he also he could hypothetically, like, draw things off the top, get himself further into the game. So, he may not want to go all in just yet. Josh, you're slow rolling a shatter storm here. Is that true? No, no, no. <laughs> That'd be brutal. Do the old... <coughs> And then drop the Shatter Storm on the table. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Passes the turn with no attack. Didn't like it. You, like you said, Josh had a like, very cautious player. Yeah. Just. Uh, he's not. I don't feel like not. attacking. I'm. I'm. He's very happy about his position in this game, and there's there's no reason to risk that in order to win faster. Let me tell you something. If he was Bruce Wayne's father, there would be no Batman. <laughs> Because he's not taking a shortcut through a crime-riddled alley when they leave the opera early because he's too cheap to take a taxi cab. He's like, no, you know what? The safe play is to take a taxi cab here and live to raise my son. <laughs> I was raised fast and loose. I don't, I don't know about this, this, this cautious style. <laughs> Sacked a uh, Citadel, got in for two. Terminate from Josh now. And with that terminate, they think. Alex is still at eight. Yeah, Josh can't just kill him, but Rage and Ravine comes pretty close. Going to grab basic swamp, I assume. Oh, planes, okay. So I think this is going to be a Rage and Ravine attack. I would assume so. I mean, if he activates the Rage and Ravine and attacks, then uh, by as early as next turn, he can start forcing Alex to chump block. And as soon as Alex chump blocks the Vault Scourge, then Josh just wins with the Terminate. Raging Ravine is just so big. And conveniently, um, if Alex takes it this turn and then chumps next turn, then it's still big enough to kill him on the following turn because Raging Ravine cumulatively gets these yep. plus plus one counters. Josh just trying to get Alex to chump block at some point. Alex down to four now. Just mocks up off the top. That was a plus one, plus one counter. 
He uh, discards a slither head. <laughs> it can be used at instant speed, actually. Pretty impressive stuff. <laughs> All right. Now, at what at what point do you think Joss decides to start using his spot removal? I don't think he needs to yet, obviously. I think he's probably going to attack with the Servine again. And when he gets a block, he'll probably use the Terminate. Counting up the artifacts, saying how 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 big can you go on the modular? Yes. How large can these become? And yes, he can make a five five lifelink. But if he makes the five five lifelink, you have terminate and yep. then you win. So that's a good question. All right, so both players in the tank a bit here. Josh is going to activate this Raging Ravine and attack again, forcing Alex to chump block. Will Spirit Jund, you are now. I'm now 0 for 0 5. 0 for 5. In hey, your last time. Predictions. Last time I called it in round four of day one, so I'll <laughs> <laughs> have a lot of. Uh, Edgar Flores has fallen. Two games to zero to young Jacob Wilson from California playing Spirit John. Well done. Well done, Jacob Wilson. And we'll be going to the finals of the Pro Tour of the Grand Prix. Yep. And, and oh Alex has no cards in hand and no yeah, I'm no permits in play. Win, so. Yep, and that's it. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> one for six. Alright. So We have a finals. We have a finals and guess what? Spirit Jund versus Spirit, Spirit Jund. Jund. Yes, it is. Look at that. There are a lot of decks in this top 16. Yeah. There was there was a wide variety of decks. Three copies of Spirit Jund in the top 16, but two out of two of the finalist decks are Spirit Jund decks. Yeah. Josh Utter Layton, Pro Tour top eight competitor, uh, platinum player. Yeah. One, one, one of the game 